we did a television program that even when I did it, I couldn't believe it existed. Yeah. It was Drunk History. It was a yeah. very, very big American show, and they did it for a few years here. And the premise of the show was that they would get a comedian to retell a famous story from history, but do it after having consumed a huge amount of alcohol. Yeah. It, it was, <laughs> the consumption was so serious that you actually had to go for a full physical beforehand. Yes, you had to, to go make to sure Harley that, Street and then yeah. have a proper like medical, yeah. Yeah, and it was like... I mean, the budget of that show must have been bananas yeah. because they would then get sketch performers and comedy actors yeah. to act out the versions of history that you were telling and it would yes. be the comedian speaking all the parts and people miming along to it. It was a really fun show to yeah. do. And they, I think Comedy Central still does it right now. They do a version of it for black history stories. But, yeah, they do, do they do that in the UK? Yeah, in the UK, yeah. yeah. And so it was a really fun show to get to do but it must have been cost them a lot of money because it wasn't just any Harley Street doctor the first when I went for my insurance physical I was sat next to Ronnie Wood <laughs> so it was like they, they're not even just getting doctors they're getting the doctors that are keeping the Rolling Stones alive yeah yeah yeah. It, 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 which is no mean feat the fact that three of them are still alive blows my mind yeah but um, I was filming in the late afternoon Ed was filming in the morning yes we had a conversation where I said we're going to miss each other what a shame yeah I get there. We've not missed each other because you've not left. No. The reason you've not left is you arrived and were told, I believe, a specific blood alcohol level that at the time was the highest. Yes. And had pledged to defeat that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I write, they take you for lunch first. Yeah. And they're like, we'll have a couple of drinks now, sort of get it going. Yeah. And then I arrived and heard there was there was a sort of, there was something to aim for. I mean, I don't think they in, they intended no, it as a target. No, they said that to you as a point of interest, yeah. that this is how high a blood alcohol level, I, I can't remember which comedian, but a comedian blew. They told you that because they thought it would be an interesting tidbit. What you heard was challenge extended. <laughs> and so you decided to drink until you had hit that blood alcohol level. Yes. When I got there... You were lying on the sofa. Yeah, I was passed out, yeah. Passed out. Proper passed out. Completely asleep. Yeah. Like, snoring. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, fine. Um, and they wouldn't sign you out. Yeah. Because your wife was out of the country, if memory serves. She certainly wasn't at home. She wasn't at home. And they wouldn't sign you out of the building until they knew you were... That's how drunk you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't... Also, I called Acaster and he was in America. I don't think I knew that. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, James. James, I do drug history. <laughs> um, I drank something. I they put how much you've drunk on the screen, but it was. But I, I was drinking gin and tonics. Yeah. But like, it's double figures, double gin and tonics, and then I moved on to vodka, sugar-free Red Bull. Unreal. Um, I mean, it's a great episode, but I don't remember a, a thing about it. I knew your wife was going to return at a certain point in time. So maybe she wasn't away. Maybe she was just out yeah. working. But I said, well, look, if there's a problem, I can he can come home with me because I know where he lives. Yeah. Because I, I used to live in that flat. So we'll, it, we'll be able to sort something out. At one point, they were going to call your mum. Yeah, yeah, bad idea. <laughs> Anne Gamble would not have enjoyed that. No, no, no. As, as I say in the book, you know, she constantly going like, well, maybe have one, maybe alternate with soft drinks. <laughs> A good idea. Unlike yeah. making tea with the door open yeah, as a way yeah, yeah. <laughs> It may be the only bad idea Ad Gamble's ever had. Yeah. But so then I said, all right, listen, I'll just film mine and then he and I can go home. And also I'd moved, but I didn't live very far away from you. Yeah. So it, I said, it, it's all, it'll all be fine. I get in there. We are about half an hour in, so I'm not very drunk. And I'm just at the start of getting hammered. Yeah. You just hear this, like, knock on the door, which shouldn't have happened. No. There's no close, one around. Close it's set. a close set. There's yeah. no one around. Excuse me! <laughs> May I please watch Nish film his drunk history? They, so you're just stood outside. They bring you in. Hello, Nish. Just w doing, like, a Homer Simpson whisper. Yeah. The only whisper that's louder than your actual yeah, yeah, voice. Yeah. They say, okay, you can come in and watch. Thank you! And they're like... You ha the thing is, you have to be completely silent because all the crew was just in the next room yeah. and they didn't want you to hear the crew. You go, OK. And then you do this very cartoonishly exaggerated, like Jim Carrey and the Mars tiptoe through whilst the room. looking at you, yeah. You're looking at me the whole time. You're red. Yeah. Just completely <laughs> red. It's like Henry VIII has walked in. 
sit down. They go, okay, I say something, you laugh so loudly, <laughs> and they're like, Ed, what did we just tell you? Shut up. 